Um, why not suppose that we have uh, Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. It's once again time for a little remake. Let's go ahead and get started. Papa's back with a very useful identity. I hope you get that reference. Thumbs up if you watched Papa Flemmy from the start. I'm talking to you, Sansa Man or Sansa Man or whatever you are called. You're a good boy, you're watching all of my stuff. Never mind. <laughs> I would like to show you guys that we can decompose every function into the sum of an odd and even function. And it doesn't matter what that function is, let's call it f of x, Let ma let's make it a general boy. And it can be real valued, complex valued, it doesn't matter. And before getting started with the real proof, I would like you guys to remember what odd and even actually means. So let's suppose that this function f of x is even. What does it mean for a function to be even? Well, if we plug in minus x into this function, so f of minus x, we are going to end up with f of x. So it stays as it is. And we have the other case. So suppose that f of x is odd. Well, what does it mean for a function to be odd? It just means that f of minus x is nothing but minus f of x. So those are our properties and we are going to make use of them later on in the video. But at first I would like to do some basic algebraic manipulation on this function f of x right here. So we have f of x. I hope you guys agree with me that we can decompose this into f of x over 2 plus f of x over 2. So we really didn't change anything. If we add those two fractions together, we end up with 2 times f of x over 2, which is just f of x. And also, it wouldn't hurt us to add a little zero here. So that doesn't change anything. We can add a zero. But what is the zero exactly? Well, it's just f of minus x over 2 minus f of minus x over 2. We didn't change anything. I hope you trust me on this. And now we can group the factors together a little bit. So the first one is f of x plus f of minus x over 2. And the second one is f of x minus f of minus x over 2. And daddy is going to blame that this thing right here is the even part. We are going to call it e of x. And this thing right here is the odd part of this function f of x. Okay, I'm claiming this. How are we going to prove this? Well, why not use those facts up here on those functions right here and see if those hold. So the first one, so let's prove it, that the statement is indeed true. So we want to show that e of x is even. But what does it mean for e of x to be even? Well, it just means that e of minus x is nothing but e of x. And we can just plug minus x into here and see what we get. So let's go ahead and get started. That also means that um, e of minus x is nothing but um, f of minus x. So this is a minus x. And then plus f of minus minus x is going to be positive x over 2. And this is just the basic addition and it even holds some polynomials, function, etc. So we can just interchange the order up here to f of x plus f of minus x over 2, which is going to be e of x once again. So we have shown that e of x is indeed an even function. Same procedure for o of x, the odd function. So o of x is odd. That's the statement. But what's it equivalent to saying? Well, that o of minus x is nothing but minus o of x. And just like before, we can plug minus x into here and see what we get at first. So, o of minus x, what is that? That is f of minus x minus f of minus minus x is just positive x over 2. And now we can factor out a minus 1 up here in the numerator. What do we get? So we get minus and then um, minus f of minus x plus f of x, so we have to change the signs right here, over 2. And the same argument as before, normal addition holds on those functions up here, so we can just interchange them to end up with minus f of x minus f of minus x over 2. And this right here is indeed minus 
O of X. Let's place a black boy here. <laughs> and we have indeed shown this. And this decomposition right here, at least for real valued function, is unique. So this decomposition is uniquely determined. So what does it mean for something to be unique? Well, that we can express f of x always in this form, e of x plus o of x, as the sum of an even and an odd function. Um, why not suppose that we have uh, uh, one more composition, let's put it that way. So um, decomposition, so f of x can be breaking up into e1 of x plus o1 of x, so this is the first decomposition and we are going to claim that there's a second one, namely e2 of x plus o2 of x. Let's put it that way. And why not subtract o2 of x on both sides and also e1 of x on both sides? That's equivalent to saying that o1 of x minus o2 of x is equal to e2 of x minus e1 of x. And Here's just a little fact. The sum and the difference of two odd functions is also odd ones again. So let's call this one capital O of x. That's a big odd function. And the sum or difference of two even functions is even once again. Let's call it capital E of x. So those two are equal. But if you have real valued function or functions, then the only real function that is um, odd and even at the same time is zero. So this statement right here is equivalent to saying those are zero. That also means that e1 of x uh, or e2 of x minus e1 of x is equal to zero and now we can add e1 on both sides. That's equivalent to saying that e2 of x equals to e1 of x. Same spiel up here. That also means that o1 of x is equal to o2 of x. And it also means we can express this function f of x uniquely as a sum of an odd and even function every time. And it's unique. Have you ever encountered this right here before? Um, probably you did when dealing with the sine or the cosine. Maybe you have used this before, but never really knew that this is exactly this technique right here. So let's just take a look at, for example, um, e to the x, our exponential boy. Well, we can decompose this like this right here. So that's e to the x plus e to the minus x over two, and then the odd part, e to the x minus e to the minus x over two. And this first part, this even part, is called the hyperbolic cosine of x, and the second part is called the hyperbolic sine of x. And if you do the same spiel for e to the i x, you end up with sine and cosine, but you have to be a little bit careful with the sine here, because um, it has an imaginary unit in there. So you need to take care, but well, it's the same procedure basically. I hope you did enjoy this little useful remake. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. If you want to support me a bit more, link to my Patreon is in the description. I would appreciate all kinds of help from you guys. And up until the next video, have flamed the day. See ya.